how great thou art. Thank you, Lori. Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's in Bloomington, Minnesota. So glad that you are here gathered in worship. Um, if you are on um, line, welcome to you as well. Know that you can download the bulletin on our webpage, stlukesbloomington.org. A number of announcements. God's work our hands on Sunday, uh, September 12th. Uh, please come and join us. There's a number of activities, both inside and outside. If you would like to work outside, you know, wear your clothes to do so and bring tools to do so as we clean up our grounds, but also a number of other activities around the church as well. If you live nearby and you're live streaming, grab your backpack and your pet and come join us for our outdoor worship at 10 a.m. right in front of our church, 1701 West Old Shakopee Road in Bloomington. Be great to have you. We're kicking off the program year on Wednesday, September 15th with a Children Confirmation and Youth Ministry gathering at 6 o'clock. There are uh, Wednesday Church Night kicks off on September 22nd. It begins with a community meal at 5.30. All are welcome to come and enjoy this meal. Thank you to all those who helped serve these meals. We are looking for some pizza cooks. And that's the most popular night, uh, pizza. So if you are interested in uh, joining us, uh, please sign up. There's five different serving options. And so you're only once every five weeks, and the pizza one will not start until October. And you've heard the phrase, all work, no play. Uh, this year, we'll have a fantasy football league that Paul Klein is starting up. It's for charity. Uh, you don't have to know anything about football. It's an auto draft, and you can do um, an auto lineup, and it'll take care of you. I can't tell you how many people I know have won their league simply by doing that, not knowing anything about uh, football or their team even. And we are sailing around the Apostle Islands the week of September 24th, uh, weekend of September 24th to the 26th. No experience is necessary. It is my um, gift to see the number of people who get their bucket, like, bucket list checked off as we go to the sea caves of Devil's Island if uh, weather allows us to do so. There's many more activities. Just catch us on our website. With all of that said, I invite us to stand for our opening litany of blessing. For the marvels of your creation, we praise you, o God. for the opportunity to explore and study, we praise you, o God. for those who guide us, teachers and mentors, we praise you. Teach us your ways and guide us in your path. For you are the creator of all that is, seen and unseen. Amen. Let us join together in singing, This is my Father's world, number 824, in the back of your hymnal.
Let us pray. Source and sustainer of life, we cherish the myriad works of your hands. Water, earth, and sky are yours, as are all their inhabitants, wild and tame. We thank you for creatures that nourish and serve us, befriend, enrich, entertain, and protect us. May we who are made in your image care for them well, and may your groaning yet wondrous creation rally and thrive, revealing to all who come after us your wise, redemptive, transfiguring love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. Today's reading is from the 12th chapter of Job, verses 7 through 10. But ask the animals and they will teach you, the birds of the air and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. From Matthew, the sixth chapter. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Bless the beast and the children. Title for our message today, our activity that will happen at our 10 a.m. worship when we will gather outside and we invite children and others to bring a backpack or a bag, uh, a courier bag, maybe even a briefcase. Um, do people still use briefcases? Back when I was younger, there was a, a young man who saw all the other kids trying to be cool, bringing briefcases to school, so he wanted to fit in. Well, the only thing he had that he brought to school was a carry-on luggage bag. He got noticed, not the way he wanted to. We are combining the blessing of the backpacks and the blessing of the animals out of convenience, but they are connected. How we treat animals and children speaks greatly to who we are. As I shared in my blog, Bless the Beast and the Children, the song by the Carpenters that was played often at our house. My parents had most of the Carpenters albums, including a song for you, and Bless the Beast and the Children was on the First song on the B side, for those of you who remember albums. Blessed Beast and the Children is a 1971 film adaptation of the novel of the same name, written by Glendon Swarthout. It was directed by Stanley Kramer, and he gave Barry Devorce, Devorson the screenplay of the film to compose a song. At first, Devorson wrote a beautiful melody and then loaded it with lyrics about all the terrible things we're doing to children and animals. Stanley said, that will not work. So the next day he changed them to simpler lyrics that call to protect the innocence of animals and children. Bless the beast and the children. In this world they have no voice, they have no choice. For the world can never be the world they see. Light their way, when darkness surrounds them. Give them love, let it shine all around them. 
Give them shelter from a storm. Keep them safe and keep them warm. Education and emotional well-being are vital components, not only for raising healthy and caring children, but for our society as a whole. Studies have documented the link between animal abuse and domestic violence and child abuse. A study in England found that in 23 families known to have, com have committed abuse against animals, 83% also had identified, were identified by social service agencies as having children at risk for abuse at home. Another study in the largest battered women's shelters in the 48 states, when the women were asked about their experience with domestic violence, child abuse, and animal, animal abuse, 85% answered yes to all three. That's where the church comes into play. Spiritual well-being includes education, emphasizing our role in caring for God's creation, including one another. It is our gift, it is our mission, it is our work. Caring for creation, including one another, every child is our child. As Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Look at our readings today, and we, will hear, we hear from Job. If you think your life is hard, read the 42 chapters of Job. During, doing so makes these verses even more amazing. Job tells his friends why he continues to trust God in spite of all the struggles he faces. He says, ask the animals, the birds of the air, the plants of the earth, and the fish of the sea. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In the Lord's hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. I like another translation that says, the breath of all creation. Jesus likewise shared with the crowds, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear? Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Like Job, Jesus points to creation. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single day, a single hour, to your span of life? Education, care, and faith has made all the difference in my life. I've had a number of pets, namely dogs. I'm allergic to cats. Yet my mother and my mother-in-law got another cat after their prior one had died. I know where I sit in the pecking order. For me, Barkley Square Gemini Ginger was my best friend for a part of my life. After my aunt got married and moved into an apartment that didn't allow dogs, she gave me her dog, Gemini. As her life was coming together, my life was coming apart. Gemini made all the difference. The long name is because her dog was a show dog, and they often have long, ridiculous names. I had to promise my aunt I would not only take care of her dog, but I would continue to show the dog. The education and training required to do so gave me a new focus. I was now concerned about caring for my dog and no longer worrying about what was happening in my home. <clears throat> my parents eventually divorced, and long story short, in six months I went from living with my mom to living with our neighbors to living with my dad. But the one constant is, Gemini was with me through all of it. God, bless this child with this beast, Gemini. I went from worrying to being blessed and in turn learned how to be a blessing by caring for Gemini. There's the key. What worries you? How can you move from worry to blessing? I, be, I believe it comes down to remembering the simple truth like the animals, birds, fish, and even the plants. May we have trust in God and simply do what we were created to do. And we all know what that was and what that is. Love God 
and love all creation, including one another. Anything and everything outside of that brings not only worry, but division and chaos. We see that in so much of what is going on in our world today. How can we respond to offer hope, unity, and harmony? Can I give you a crazy thought? Everything happening in Afghanistan, war is never the final answer. It's always temporary. And for the first 10 years of the war, I didn't want Osama bin Laden captured or killed. I wanted him converted. Just as the Apostle Paul, who previously was an enemy of the Christian faith, persecuting and killing others, because of his beliefs. But after having a come to Jesus moment literally, Paul discovered the peace that surpasses all understanding. No longer was he worried about the temporary, he was focused on the eternal, sharing the faith, hope, and love of Jesus with everyone, including, as Jesus calls us to do, loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us. In a couple of weeks, we'll celebrate God's work, our hands, with some formal activities. But my prayer is that it's a way of life for each one of us every day. We think of all the concerns in our world. How will we influence them? It's a process that I teach our youth every, almost every year. We have them Big circle, what are all the problems in the world today? And then a small circle inside. How can you have an influence over them? The room changes from like, oh my gosh, the world is falling apart, to we can do something about this. So may your life be one to offer unity, harmony, and care for others and all creation. And remember that God is not part of your world. We are a part of God's world. May we live that truth, knowing that from the beginning, we've been blessed to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to stand and gather together in singing God of the Sparrow, num verses 1, 2, and 6, number 740 in the back of the hymnal. Join confessing our faith the word of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious Lord of love, we affirm our vital connection with all living creatures. Empower us to seek their welfare, intervening where, we, where needed, defending and tending your world with grace, compassion, and dignity. Let us pray for all who are beginning a new school year that both students and teachers will be blessed in their academic endeavors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Support all who teach and all who learn that together they may know and follow your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant teachers the gift of joy and insight and students the gift of diligence and openness that all may grow in what is good and honest and true. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Patient Lord of life, guide our choices so that we might safeguard habitats, ensuring by your grace that the mysteries and beauties of nature unfold for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saving Lord of lords, your, fo your word foretells a day when the wolf will, die, will lie down with the lamb. Renew our, vi our vision for the peaceful kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, remember all who have gone before us, including our beloved pets. Thank you for the love we shared and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, gracious God, for the sake of Jesus, our good shepherd. Amen. And now join in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, uh, fill out your welcome card and ready for uh, offering.
Please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you all. <clears throat> During this time of reflection, I um, was thinking of our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, in Haiti, uh, those who are facing the forest fires and the hurricanes. And so I am grateful that we are part of a larger church that responds to those, specifically with Lutheran disaster response, along with Lutheran world relief. And know that a portion of our capital campaign was directed toward Lutheran disaster response, and we will be making a contribution to those, those efforts. If you would like to participate in that individually, uh, simply make your check out to, or put money in the envelope in the pew, or online. Um, and to St. Luke's and for the disaster responses. For we are called to be a blessing to others. So let us bless one another with a, a wave of peace to those who are around you. And those of you who are at, online, a chance for you to uh, share a word of peace in your comments or in the chat section. But most of all, let us be a people of peace out in the world, greeting others in the name of Jesus with, his, with uh, the love of Christ. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Let us close singing, How Great Thou Art.
peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.